Welcome to the channel. In this video, I'll be going over how I installed the GT body mounts onto my Typhon and how I trimmed the body to fit. Enjoy! Let's get right into the front bumper, which in this case is from a Mugen Seeky MGT7. If you'd like to follow along and copy what I've done, you'll need three parts. The first is the Mugen Seeky front bumper kit, which provides all the plastics. The second is the foam bumper, which is the actual piece of foam. And the third is the body kit which provides all the body posts. This bumper is pretty common for GT conversions because it bolts right up to the Typhon chassis with these two diff case screws. The main amount of work is getting it mounted on the top so that it maintains rigidity. This is the stock piece of plastic that comes with the MGT7 bumper kit. Now what a lot of people will do is they'll run a zip tie through this hole into the top of the front shock tower if they don't have them trimmed down like I do. Or, some will take this part and drill a hole through this and just run a bolt through it right into the diff case and mount it that way. Or, if you like something a little bit more custom like I do, you can make a plate that bolts right from the front of the bumper to the diff case. Now what I've done here is I've taken a 1 16th inch thick piece of 5086 aluminum, cut it to rough size, traced the profile of the plastic part around it, located the holes, drilled them to fit an M3 flat countersunk head screw, sanded the profile, and then bent it until it matched up to the diff case where I wanted it. I was hoping to mount my piece to these two M3 bolt holes that secure this diff cover on, but I actually messed up this part of the piece, so I ended up using these two smaller holes, which are typically used to keep the sway bar from sliding back and forth. Now these two holes, as they come from the Typhon, are not M3, so you will need to drill and tap these out to M3 if you want to follow what I did. After that, all you need are some body pins and set screws to hold these in place, and you're ready to go. Now because I'm running a Delta Plastics Jaguar body, I needed to shorten this post by about a half inch on each side to get it to fit low enough. Um, another thing I did is I also needed to sand the edge of this front bumper down in order for the Jag body to fit. Now, this was pretty easy. I took most of the material off with an X-Acto knife, and then I just sanded the edge with some 300 grit sandpaper, and it cleaned it up really nicely. For the rear of the car, I wanted to get the lowest profile body mounting solution I could in order to mount the Jaguar body the way I wanted to, which I'll detail in a second. My goal was to get these plates able to go flush with this wing mount and I was able to do that using a little ingenuity and the parts I'll show you. A lot of GT conversions use the stock Mugen plastic parts that I mentioned earlier, and some will even use an Arma Sinton shock tower and body mount that bolts right up to the diff case. And I imagine as the Arma Limitless and Infraction have been out for a while now, people will use those shock towers and body mounts to figure out even lower profile mounting. I went ahead and removed the body mount so you can see the holes I drilled in the shock tower. All I've used here is the Mugen plastic part and two aluminum threaded M3 spacers 25 millimeters long to give clearance for the shocks. I drilled holes here and here slightly below the wing mount holes and the same distance apart from each other as these two holes. After that I simply made sure everything was as short as possible so I switched my stock Typhon wing mount out for this tally and low profile mount and I shortened the rear shock tower. I made this rear wing with three main features in mind. First, all fast speed runs with the Jag body that I've seen show that the back clip has been cut out, which prevents unnecessary drag on the back of the shell and lowers the chance of a blowover. I wanted to fill in this space instead of leaving it empty on my body. Second, I wanted my car to have vertical fins that for one would look cool, but more importantly would give the car aerodynamic stability. Third, I wasn't finding a convenient spot on the shell to poke the body mounts through, so I decided to locate them in the cutout space. Here I'll be showing how I trim and cut my wheel wells. I'll be using a spare piece of Lexan from the Jaguar body, and I start by marking the wheel well locations with a Sharpie. I chose to mark the wheel well locations after the body had already been reamed and mounted onto the chassis, which I fully loaded with electronics to ensure that the wheels would be in their final resting position. Using a plastic compass I had on hand and an X-Acto blade, I traced out the diameter circle I wanted, just cutting lightly into the protective film on the outside of the shell. 
Next, I used a pair of curved Lexan scissors and removed the majority of the material from the wheel well, trying to cut an eighth of an inch inside from the traced circle. After that, I simply take a rough sanding drum from my Dremel and cut back and forth applying light pressure until I match the trace diameter. Lastly, I remove any burrs with the X-Acto knife and I'm ready to paint. Well, that covers my GT conversion. In the next video, I'll be masking and painting the body. If you'd like to follow along, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.